Welcome to Family Call, your favorite TV show that talks about everything around the family, from health to education to economy and so on and so forth. Today we'll be discussing COVID-19 and we are essentially talking about why are some people asymptomatic. I have an authority in the field in, this, in, in the studio and after this time out, I'll introduce him to you. Don't go away. <laughs> Welcome back. Still family call. And I told you earlier, we we're talking about why are some people asymptomatic to COVID-19. I have Dr. Etu in the studio. He is a consultant microbiologist with Lagos State and is going to take us through this. Dr. Etu, you're welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Yes. Let's start asymptomatic. We use the word. What does it mean? To make it easy for our viewers to understand, what we mean when we say a patient is asymptomatic. There's a point of being acquiring a, that's an external organism, which is not peculiar to the body. So the point where that organism's presence in the body creates a problem that the patient can feel or someone else can observe. Mm. Now, this process itself is called an incubation period. It could may last a few hours, a couple of days, or several months. Now, in the case of COVID-19, there has been variations in what the incubation period has been, some as short as three days, two days, and some as long as 14 days. Some have proven to be longer than 14 days. So what do we mean when we say a patient is asymptomatic? The virus gets into the body through a portal of entry and then finds its way to where it creates its problem. And then when the problem is created, the individual will feel certain things. Symptoms are usually what we call it. Mm. Now, symptoms are what I say, okay, I come to you as a doctor, I have a headache, that's I'm a symptom. I'm a patient, I have headache. Yes, that's a symptom. That's a symptom. I'm coughing, that's a symptom. Okay, so from the point in time when the art individual actually acquires that organism gets it into his body through the various means, which could be through the nose, the mouth, into the respiratory system. So when the individual begins to feel any of the symptoms, that incubation period. Now, if it comes into the respiratory system, you know, the mouth, the nose, colonizes it, or no, rather, it finds its way in from upper airway to the lower airway, into the lungs. Where we have like a surface layer of cells, it attaches and then begins to replicate and find its way and cause all the problems in different parts of the body. So at that point, when issues come up, you begin to see the symptoms. Okay. Now symptoms vary. I mean, different symptoms have been observed in different categories of individuals from younger age, to older age group, all kinds of symptoms across the world. Common symptoms include fever, that's why you always have temperature checks at every different point in time, mm -hmm. coughing, um, sneezing, some would have runny nose, some will have loss of smell, mm. some will have loss of taste. So for s those ones that just, should I say the simple symptoms you see. So, I mean, severe symptoms like um, lack of um, breathlessness or having fast breathing, you know, to easy fatigability, being tired. Uh, normally I would walk from here to Yaba or from my house to another three bus stops a week, but now I walk just one bus stop and I'm already feeling weak, I feel tired. Gradually I'm getting more and more tired. So people complain of various things. Okay. So some would even say they just came down from the can, they fell, almost fell down for just no reason. So. These are the common symptoms. I mean, muscle pain and aches. Now, for the asymptomatic, there are two categories. There's the actual 
asymptomatic okay. and pre-symptomatic. Mm. What's the difference? Good. Now, the pre-symptomatic means the individual has got some of the organism in, it is already causing the problem, but the problem has not started showing for the individual to feel it and complain, or for any other individual to observe and complain. So the virus is in the body, but it's not causing problems. It's, right? it's causing the problem. It's causing the problem. But, but the problem the is not seen. Mm. That's the pre-symptomatic. So give up that individual a few more days, he or she will become symptomatic. Mm. That is what the pre-symptomatic category. Whereas the actual asymptomatic are those that are asymptomatic, the virus is there, may or may not be causing damage. Mm. And throughout the period while the virus is going to the body, till it leaves the body, or till the individual completely recovers from whatever it may be. Or the, till the individual dies? The individual will not show any symptom. Mm. Now, what are the observations that you know, have called, that have occurred during this COVID pandemic? You can take a few scenarios from cases that were occurred in Iceland, Italy, um, the Diamond Princess um, luxury cruise ship. Um, so the U.S. naval ships and so many, I mean, places all around the world. So even the nursing homes, okay. to prisons. When the entire population of such an area. If I closed area and open area, closed area would mean, the, for example, the nursing home or the prison or um, an acute care center where all the patients are in. They are in, they don't go in and out. Uh, yes. When they are all sampled, let's say they have about 300 and you take s test samples from all the 300, whether symptomatic, asymptomatic, take from all. Among those that were asymptomatic, they found out that there was a varying percentage of them who tested positive, but were still asymptomatic. They were observed for about two weeks to see if they would become symptomatic, symptomatic. so that as we eliminate those who are what? Pre-symptomatic. However, they found out that despite the observation for 14 days, for some more than 14 days, none of this group became symptomatic. Testoid still testing positive even after the 14 days. Okay, so these are the group that are asymptomatic. Okay, so let's go to the next question after that, which is why are some people asymptomatic? Now, they have the virus in them. There are several theories that have been proposed. Okay. Okay. Some would say they got the virus. But the virus did not find its way into the cells. Meaning they got to that top layer cells, the top layer cells had some ways of not allowing the virus, the virus to penetrate them, and therefore the virus couldn't go below. That's one. Theories. And it tests positive. And yes, this will still tell us. I mean, you take a sample, it's there, it's staying on it, but mm. it's not finding its way into cause problem. Mm. That's one possibility. Another possibility, some will say, oh, you know, the virus comes from a, viru a family of coronaviridae, coronaviruses. Uh, so it has cousins that have been influenza virus, you know, and mm. all that have happened in the past. So maybe, you know, I mean, that individual, those patients, you know, could have gotten one of those cousins, acquired immunity, and therefore when this one okay. came on, oh, don't worry, I've dealt with your cousin mm. before. You're not going to get from me. <laughs> and so has fighting antibodies which are similar and would hold it back. Another theory. There's also the belief that some population like we have here in Nigeria with high prevalence of um, pulmonary tuberculosis and have received the PCG vaccine also, may have some form of immunity against it because our population mm. is not affected so much as those who, that live in regions where that is not prevalent. prevalent. So that's on that okay. So for different individuals, you have different. However, the most interesting one is that some individuals would 
get the virus, would have some bit of damage, but will never be symptomatic. It would never be symptomatic. Mm. However, if you do a CT scan, you will do what the specialized kind of X-ray scans we do of the we chest. To see some. You will see some signs that this individual had, had some lung damage. Okay, so we'll take a break, Doctor. Yes, Thank please. you so far. After this break, we'll continue from there. Thank you. It's been family call, and we've been talking about asymptomatic cases of COVID-19. Why are some people asymptomatic? After this break, we'll continue from there. Don't go away. Ames Media Company Limited offers media services for developmental journalism, public relations, marketing, event coordination pan Nigeria, and training. Top-notch media content comprising documentaries, talk shows, magazine and children's shows, each and all promoting family values for sustainable development. Our partners, collaborators and patrons span individuals, groups, corporate bodies, government, NGOs, UN bodies and more. Be reassured that our studio facility will meet your yearnings of digital solutions to your broadcast content. We are peopled by board members with unblemished track records and major players in the corporate world. Hello, it's Child Crest. Our panache, passion and professionalism make her the lead driver of our goal-focused team. Entrust your brands to Ames Media Company Limited to add value to your corporate existence while meeting your target audience. www.amesmedia.com.ng Info at amesmedia.com.ng Like us on our Facebook page, Ames Media Company Limited. Ames Media, turning your dreams into reality. Welcome back. It's your show, your favorite TV show, Family Core, and we've been talking about why are some people asymptomatic to COVID-19 and Still in the house is Dr. Etu. Dr. Etu, yeah, I asked a question, and I really want you to answer that question. So these patients are asymptomatic. Is it possible for a patient that is asymptomatic to die? Is it likely, or is it be, has it been found? Because you said if a test is done, like CT scan, you may see some damages, some damages that have been done. Okay, so again, that's this. Uh, should I say an interesting way to look at it that can an asymptomatic patient die? Now, the death of any individual can be explained by for various means. You know, when you perform an autopsy, especially for patients who you do not have a previous morbid uh, diagnosis or whatever might have been there on the line in this condition. But in such individuals who may also just die suddenly, when samples are taken you will find some to be positive. However, the question is, was it related to the presence mm. of the virus or not? Mm. Yeah. So the next question would be, what things would you really like to look for in autopsy? So the pathologist uh, the, you know, part forming the, um, or taking up the case to perform the autopsy would determine what you know, tissue samples are taken in the autopsy and check if those damages to those particular cells, those underlying pathologies are also present. So you know, to be able to say conclusively, is this related? Is it not related? You know, is there an association with the presence of the virus and then eventually the death? And why did the patient not present mm. before the death? So yes, that may happen. But I mean, to just say that is reason, no, you just, we can't just conclude. Okay. We must have evidence. Now, what are the dangers of being asymptomatic? I'm talking about the community now. <laughs> because ordinarily, 
Nigerian population, they will say, ah, mm. we are fine in Nigeria. <laughs> Even if there's COVID, we are fine. Okay, so let me put it this way. The word super spreader. Mm. What does it sound to you? Super spreader. Somebody that so spreads it very fast. So we have patients. <laughs> so we have individual X who is asymptomatic. Not a very friendly individual. Loves to care for everyone around the neighborhood, the old, the elderly, everybody. And goes around, you know, sharing gifts, uh, greeting everyone, saying hello, hi. And then in two weeks' time, everyone down that same street, the elderly, those who are at risk, suddenly become sick. And they're all tested and they're positive. I know, I never left my house. I never left my house. Okay. Did you receive any visitor? Oh, no, 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 no. You know, my neighbor just brings me all what I need. <laughs> Aha. But my neighbor is not sick. Yeah. He's not the, coughing, no complaint of sore throat, no fever. That's the super spreader. So mm. asymptomatic individuals are those who would do a whole lot of that. So you would hide in a household. You have the, let's say, the three generations the grandparents, the parents, and the, and children. the children. And you find the children fine. Uh -huh, the parents, depending on age and all, may be fine, may not be fine, or you know, may not even have any complaint, or they just had a transient complaint and moved on. Mm -hmm. And then you find grandparents sick. Mm. And everyone is worried. The grandma never left the house. Oh, she never did anything. She's always on the door. But to see the children left the house regularly. They would not fall sick, they're asymptomatic, but we bring it to grandma. Mm. And grandma would get it and fall sick. Mm. So within a family system, you would find the scenario where certain individuals are the only ones sick and everybody's saying, but they never left the house. Mm. Whereas the young ones who left the house. They're cool. Okay. So that is the issue with the asymptomatic individuals. Okay, so it's really dangerous. So we should not just um, um, feel good that um, we're asymptomatic. We're fine. No. Nah. Now, some people are projecting some, uh, proposing some theory. Like, so, you know, in Nigeria, we're used to malaria. You know, <laughs> the Caucasians, malaria deals with them a lot. That's why um, um, COVID-19 is dealing with them, and mm -hmm. we are not coming down with COVID-19 like that. Is, was, is there a relationship? Okay, so again, I, I mean, I try to say that different theories also of why people are, or some individuals are what, asymptomatic. I mean, there's even been a survey among pregnant women. Pregnant women. And they found that, that by eight, over 80% of the pregnant women in that hospital we had deliveries were asymptomatic or were positive. So that, I mean, the reality is that it has not, it's, well, of course, there's some relationship, as I explained, with the region, the kind of diseases, the flu we've had and all. Yes. The malaria theory. <laughs> um, in reality, a lot of individuals would have had COVID, symptomatic, but classified it as malaria. Yeah. Why? Because they never tested. They never went for testing. They never got tested. Mm. They never got tested. I mean, you ask every person who is feeling free, very sure, oh, you say it in your bar, iba, 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 And then, for some of these individuals, they, had, they have mild symptoms. So they would recover. And then after taking all the anti-malarias, the herbs and all, they recover. And they tell you, see, you see, I told you. I told you it was malaria. I told you it was malaria. So for our population and for the community, what should we do generally? You know, it means that just anybody may have COVID-19. You, you're, not, you're not symptomatic and then there's no need to worry, but what should we do to curb this spread? 
So in reality, after several of such surveys which I described to you where I mean the entire population of yeah. different places, nursing homes, everyone at different locations were tested and they found out that there are so many people positive, but they're not sick. But the worry was that they found out later that those that were not sick spread it to a whole of other people who were still negative and they became eventually sick and they got sick, I mean. So the, that was when the whole infection prevention methods came into play that look. Mm. For safety, symptomatic, asymptomatic, everybody mask up. So just like in the case of HIV, you're talking about universal precaution. This, so you have ways of breaking the trans chain of transmission. Sure. So once you have the chain of transmission from the individual that has, the method in which it leaves the individual, spreads, gets to the susceptible host, and then the host receives and then gets infected. So once you can break that cycle, that chain of transmission, you're fine. So what are ways we can break it? Hand, hand hygiene, basic hand hygiene, with what I call based hand rub or hand washing, keeping the distance, staying away from crowded places, wearing a mask regularly, protecting yourself, protecting the individual. Okay, so these are just basic, you know, things that must happen. The idea is anyone could be asymptomatic. And those who are susceptible or who are more susceptible needs to be protected because you never can tell who is. I mean, there was always the theory that because the younger age group, ah, yeah, fine. But mm -hmm. we've seen younger age group you know, coming out with it. Thank you so much, Dr. Etu. It's been very nice having you in the studio. We've learned a lot, and I'm hoping that next time we invite you, you'll still be able to make our time out of your tight schedule. You're welcome, anytime. Thank you so much. Yes, it's been Family Call, the family show, and we've been talking about COVID-19 and asymptomatic people, people that have COVID-19 but yet are not symptomatic. We're going to move to other segments, and I'm hoping that since you enjoy this segment, you will stay tuned to enjoy this segment. Don't go away. Hello everyone. Testing for COVID-19 is also a major issue and the impact on the mental health of individuals uh, is something worthy of discussing and uh, addressing. In the sense that uh, before you go for tests, I know a lot of people who deserve to go for this test, but they don't want to go for it because of the anxiety of what the outcome will be. And uh, thank God that the, the level of awareness is so high now and then uh, people know that the fact that you test positive is not a death sentence but despite that the fear of people that have been exposed to them perhaps the elderly ones the younger ones whose immunities have not been tested have not uh, seen the light of the day and then the people around them who have had other comorbidities this has been a whole lot of concern some people are even saying that something you don't know may not likely kill you. The moment your ears hear the bad news may be a major issue. So this now leads us into the issue of pre-test counseling and post-test counseling. So this is very, very important. Before you go for the tests of, for COVID-19, which is a, 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 a disease that is highly stigmatized, just like HIV. So you need to do pretest counseling so that you know what you are likely going to see, what you should be expecting if the test comes out positive. And what may likely happen, the, the, the treatment modalities, if the test comes out positive. That is not a death sentence. In this sense, there is, if the test comes out positive, there is what we call psychological first aid. This is a kind of uh, treatment you get, just like normal first aid, medical first aid, is the kind of awareness, cognitive, uh, when you're talking about cognitive, that's to do with thinking 
and uh, behavioral uh, awareness that people have be, uh, when they have distressing situations around them. Distressing situation in the sense that when you are tested positive, is a lot of distress to you. It's a lot of distress to you, and it causes you so much anger. And this anger can lead to anxiety. Anxiety leading to, uh, can even get worse and leading to uh, depressive uh, uh, symptom, leading to depressive disorder. Even some people even have psychotic symptoms to the extent that they have to place them on antipsychotics. So in this sense, please, if you test positive, it's not a death sentence. It's not a death sentence. Seek help. Seek help from people that will be of utmost help unto you. Don't seek help from the wrong uh, places. Uh, one of the places where you can seek for help is if you have someone that is a psychologist who can see the person, the person can talk to you about managing your anxiety level, about taking care of the, uh, depressive symptoms that you, you could have. Or you can also go to the extent also seeing a psychiatrist there is need for that. So that all grants will be covered. And at the end of the day, you know that if the test comes out negative or positive, it's still the same, you are still the same person. And it may, ne it may not change anything. The only thing that can change is you. Welcome back. Still your family show, Family Call, and we've been talking about COVID-19 and asymptomatic people. Why are they asymptomatic? I've learned a lot. I'm more reassured and I'm more deliberate in making sure that whether I have complaints or not, I'm going to mask up, I'm going to cough or sneeze into my elbow and do other things I need to do so that whether I'm sure or not, positive or negative, COVID-19 can be uh, prevented from our communities. And I'm hoping that you too will keep keeping safe while the uh, pandemic lasts. Till I come your way again, I remain yours, Dr. Olajobi, and I say, stay blessed. <laughs> Thank you.